Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's movie blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. We'll be doing well and today we're going to be talking about Endgame, Captain Marvel, and also a very, very brief Alita Battle Angel update at the very end of this video. So if you're going to be around for that, stick around. Uh, it is pretty exciting news, I would say, just for me. But of course, if you've been following the box office numbers, you probably already know what it is. But first, let's talk about Avengers Endgame. So it has been now been, been officially revealed by uh, websites like AMC, Fandango, all the theater sites who post not only uh, just the show times, but also... We'll post synopsis and runtime. This film has now been confirmed to be over three hours in length. In fact, three hours and two minutes is the length that we have now been given, which seems to indicate that they have finally settled on a cut, settled on a version that they are comfortable with. Obviously, things are still subject to change until the theater is actually showing the movie itself. And there are no showtimes yet, but I would not be surprised if we start to get some showtimes over the next week or so. Normally, if you start to start to see theaters knowing how long the runtimes are going to be, that's when the bookers are going to start talking to the theater and saying, okay, since now we know it's three hours and two minutes, now we can go ahead and schedule the movies. The reason why you're going to see that number not change too much is because once you have and once you have those screenings and those pre-tickets available, you're not going to really want to move those show times around because once someone buys a ticket, if you have to change the show time, it means that you have to find those people. And since this is definitely going to be a movie that's going to have record-breaking pre-sales because, I mean, let's just be honest here, this is one of the biggest movie events in history when it comes to the MCU, let alone, I would say, modern movie history in general. You're going to have a lot of people excited for this, a lot of people buying tickets, and one of the worst things that you can do is say, oh, remember that showtime that we had set in stone? Well, it turns out we're going to change it by 15, 20 minutes. That is, it's not going to happen that way. So that's the reason why you're starting to see the synopsis come out, but also why you're starting to see the actual runtime, because the theaters need to know that. And eventually when the bookers come in and say, all right, we need you to show it these many times on Thursday at this time, can't be earlier than this time, super event is available for your theater, not for your theater. And then for the weekend, we did have these many showtimes in 3D, in IMAX, in Dolby, etc. These are the types of deals that go on behind the scenes that normally the bookers handle and then send them over to the larger theaters. At least this is how it works for the larger theater chain. So as I said before, I used to work over for a major theater chain and the, normally what would happen is usually that Monday or Tuesday we would get this list of the different movies that we'd have for a given weekend and that would have a, you literally would say, all right, you need five show times a day and two, sh two, two show times a day. And that's the reason why the ones that have more show times, the newer films, guess what? That means they get preference because when someone is having to create a schedule, what they're gonna do is they're going to try and fill in as many spots as they can and in as many theaters as they can and they're able to be able to fulfill that obligation. If you have a movie that only has one show time, guess which one's going to probably be scheduled last? That one with one. And it's going to be because they're gonna have to try and make sure that they can take care of that contractual obligation that they have to fulfill certain show times and certain movies with the studios that the bookers make on their behalf. Now, some theaters, if they're a little bit smaller, probably are the bookers themselves who are dealing with things with the studios. But when it comes to the bigger change, that's normally how it goes. So this is why it's actually kind of exciting because now we have a pretty good idea that this is going to be a three-hour movie. I'm personally excited by that because I love long movies, especially if they are done well. And I think that if this is the end of an entire saga, which the directors and producers seem to be indicating that this is not just the end of Infinity War, this is not just the end of Phase 3, this is the end of the Infinity Saga, it's pretty exciting because this could also be potentially one of the last really good MCU films that we get. Now, obviously, people say, oh, we got Spider-Man coming out this year. That could be good, but also, that's a, <laughs> that's a, you know, a Sony MCU, you know, concoction coming together, and so, yes, it's technically a part of the MCU, but it's also not really fully MCU. Not a full Kevin Feige production is what I'm trying to get at there. This could be the last thing. This could be, seriously, the last really great movie that we have so far, you know, because we have obviously got Captain Marvel, and everyone's still trolling in the comments saying, oh, yeah, I'm still getting comments on older videos that I made calling me out trying to say oh yeah it's been out for three weeks and it's almost at a billion dollars it's like guys like I I've already I've already talked about this I've already admitted that I guessed wrong that I did not I underestimated very much underestimated the power of the popcorn fan of the non MCU comic fan of the normies and I've already admitted to that fact and I've already said very very clearly that Captain Marvel is going to make a billion dollars but what I'm going to try to talk about today is why I think the best thing that Endgame could do and is doing is distance itself as much as possible from Captain Marvel. Now, before you go freak out in the comment section trying to say, oh, but it's making all this money, here's the thing. I've mentioned this in a previous video. Just because a movie is making money does not mean it is good. There are plenty of billion dollar films that I could point out that are crap, that are total crap, both like critically, like from an objective standpoint, and also subjectively are just, you know, for most people, in most people's eyes, crap. Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, most people, most people, that's not all, most people would probably say, not a very good movie. That made a billion dollars. So does that mean that it's automatically a good film? Could end up having had made more than Captain Marvel by the end of its run? I think Captain Marvel might make more than, than Fallen Kingdom did, but still, billion dollar film, does that make it good? 
Alice in Wonderland. Remember when that movie came out? Was everyone crying about how amazing that was? You know, there was a female lead. Oh my gosh. No, wait, that's right, because it was just a bad movie. For some reason, this is a movie that everyone and their mom has to come out of their way to try and say, no, you need to stop attacking it if you attack it or are critical of it. It means you're a sexist and it means that you're just a hateful person when that's just not the case. The fact is, is that it's just not a very good movie. There's a lot of things that are lacking in it. There's a lot of things that it breaks from a canon perspective. Great example would be the Tesseract. You know, we talk about, you know, everyone's like, oh, it doesn't break the Tesseract, you know, it doesn't break the MCU continuity. Here's the thing, MCU continuity does not just exist within the actual movies themselves. People oftentimes forget that there were television shows that we were told were a part of the canon. There's an entire show called Agent Carter that deals with the Tesseract. And so therefore, now all of that has been made uncanon, at least if they're going to tell us that this is the new canon. You add on top of that the fact that all of a sudden Captain Marvel disappears at the very end. There are no light speed generators. She can't at least presumably fly, you know, fly at light speed. And she's gone for a long time and she looks almost the exact same. So that also just doesn't make any damn sense whatsoever. And of course, I could go on. I could go on and on and on about all of the big problems with it and all the stupid decisions they make. And then this is again where I think this, this is not just a subjective point of view, but I'm, I'm sorry, when you change a story arc, when you change a plot point about how Nick Fury lost his eye from a giant event, you could have done a war, someone actually betraying him, you could have built up something for Endgame as a flashback to show him trusting somebody and losing his eye. Instead, oh, it's funny because he trusted a cat. It's not a cat, it's a flurkin. Okay, he, he, trusted a, he trusted a flurkin who scratched him and it got infected and that's how he lost his eye. I'm sorry, that's stupid. They try to play it for comedy and most people look at that and say, okay, I can, I can at least say that that was stupid. I can at least say that that was silly. For anyone that's saying that's hilarious, you just have proven the point of why you're a normie and why you don't care about anything other than just having giant images on the big screen and that's all you really care about. So when you take into all of the account, all of these things, and the fact that just because the movies make money doesn't make it a good movie, and also what they have planned to bring forward and to do with the future of her character, as well as the many other characters that they want to try and bring in after her in Phase 4 and beyond, this tells me very clearly that the best thing Endgame could do, if Endgame wants to, if the MCU of Marvel, if Kevin Feige, want this film to be a $2 billion plus dollar film, could potentially even get up there with an avatar, 2.7 billion. That's still a very high, high task for it to do. It's not impossible, but it's also very hard. But if they want to be able to repeat the Infinity War success, they've got to keep it contained on the first six. They've got to keep it contained on that group. And so far, that's what they've been doing. Other than the one trailer that finally reveals Captain Marvel at the very end, there have not really been that many trailers that have shown anything else, or clips that have shown anything else. Even posters. Again, Fandango posted out the runtime, and the poster that they put out there did not even have Captain Marvel there. And I think that what they need to do is if they want to be able to make every person happy, if they want to be able to not only bring in the normies, which obviously they've shown they can do, but also maybe bring some of those people who said, I don't want to see Captain Marvel because this seems silly to me and I don't know, or people who didn't like Captain Marvel in general, who did go to see it, people like me. If they want to be able to keep us, they have to be able to realize that this, if it's going to be the end of the Infinity Saga, should be about the Infinity players. And Captain Marvel was shoehorned in. I'm sorry, no matter what you want to say in defense of the movie, you cannot deny that that film and story and character were shoehorned in at the last minute when they did not have to be. They could have made this movie Endgame. They could have finished Phase 3 without her character. If they really wanted to bring her in, guess what they could have done? They could have introduced her in endgame and then had that be the point where all of a sudden the russos are control of how they present her character and then from there you can jump off and make your solo film to start phase four make one of the first you know maybe first second third film and if you want to have her be the lead of that great just tell a good story tell you know make a good movie the problem is that they didn't do that instead they were like no 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 we're going to force this down everyone's throats and then we're going to open up to a whole can of worms including things like this and everyone's gonna be like oh why are you why are you hating on people it, it has nothing to do with that it's the fact that you're looking at a character who in the comics, <laughs> in the comics was presented for such a way, Carol Danvers that is, for such a long time, and then was rebooted in 2012, and has been rebooted several times since then because no one is buying her comic, now being brought in, that Carol Danvers, that character, now being brought into the MCU, who basically is now their new plaything, who says, oh, see, look, we were able to bring in a woke actress and tell a woke story, and guess what? We made money. That means that we can make more risks now. They have to be very careful because there are certain risks that they can take and then get away with. Again, this film was able to appeal enough to most general audiences and most normies out there who are going to over and say, oh, no, it wasn't a bad film. It wasn't the best. I wouldn't put it in top 10. Again, there's 22 films, so that means you would put it in the bottom half of the MCU. I think that's fair. I mean, <laughs> I understand. You know, I, I, I would have put this probably in the bottom five of the MCU if it were me, but hey, 
most people don't go out of their way to love this film. And yet you're going to be starting to toy with these things and starting to toy with the audiences and say, okay, let's see how far we can actually push the audience. If you do that too quickly, you're going to lose your audience very quickly as well. And so we have this story from CBR.com. A gay Captain Marvel could be the MCU's biggest statement on diversity. Why, did, why does she have to be gay? She, she was not gay in the comics ever, to my knowledge. I mean, <laughs> and maybe one of the four reboots since then, because no one's buying her comic. I mean, they might as well have said, hey, might as well do this since no one's buying her comic anyway. Might as well try and sell this comic to people that don't read comics in the first place. I'm not trying to say that people who are, you know, who are gay don't buy comics or anything. I'm trying to say like the way and the audience, the SJW audience that they're trying to essentially count out to is what they're doing. Because when you change a character's sexual orientation or, you know, race or a wide variety of other things, if you are doing it just for the sake of doing that and appealing to a new audience, that's just not only you know, stupid, it's also lazy. It is pure laziness because what it means is that you are not confident enough to create your own new character, to create your own new superhero that is by very nature, by the very essence of the origins of their character of a sexual orientation or a certain race. I mean, seriously, think about all the comics. How many new comic book heroes have we really gotten over the last 10 years? Again, I'm not a comics guy, so if you're a comics person, please let me know. How many new original characters have we got? Not reboots, not rehashes, but actual new characters that have actually been successful and done well. Because I guarantee you that most of them are going to probably have their origins 30, 40, 50 years ago. And so what you see here is the beginning of the end of the MCU. And so we want to try to say, oh, you're being, you know, billion dollar, billion dollars for Captain Marvel. Again, I've pointed out why. Just because this film made money doesn't mean it's a good thing. Just because it made money doesn't mean that the MCU is going to continue to make money forever. No one ever thought that Star Wars would ever lose money, but guess what? Solo came out, and it lost $200 million. So things can happen. Anything anything that's big can eventually fall. The reason why they're so successful now, the reason why Captain Marvel, at least now, is making money is because they were able to make it general enough and generic enough of an MCU film for people to say, okay, nah, it was fine. It wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, but okay, I'll take it. You know, I'll, I'll accept that. And then, of course, you had the media who are protecting the film and trying to spin it as racist, sexist trolls trying to take everything. And obviously, we know that none of that's true. And all, all, you know, all of the actual people that we're being called, you know, we're the ones that are being called the racist and the sexist, but we, we're none of those things. So, again, this is just pure laziness if they decide to go in this direction. Instead of it actually being, hey, we want to go ahead and create a new character, they're just going to take existing characters and change them around to push an agenda. That is not, most people don't want that. Most people do not want agendas pushed down their throats. If you're going to tell a story about a gay character, okay, tell that story. But if you're going to change an entire character's, uh, you know, sexual orientation or any variety of other things just for the sake of doing it and not actually, you know, taking any concept of originality or trying to build anything original from it, I'm sorry, but that that's just silly. And most people, even normies, are going to say, okay, no, this doesn't make any sense. The biggest thing going on is, is there's been a lot of fan art apparently going around saying that we want Valkyrie and Brie Larson, we want Tessa Thompson and Brie Larson, we want them to fall in love. And it's like, no, why? Why would you have to do that? Valkyrie, you have a great character. I know that many people don't like her. Many people don't like Tessa Thompson. Many people don't like her portrayal. You know, there are some people that have a problem with the fact that she is not white playing Valkyrie. I personally was defensive. I was saying, dude, I like Tessa Thompson in that role. I thought she was great in it. I love Thor Ragnarok. Seeing her and, uh, you know, Chris Hemsworth play off each other was freaking awesome. It was great. What you don't need to do is take a great character established by Taika Waititi and then go ahead and screw it up by giving it over to, I mean, seriously, if they decide to rehire the directors that made this trash in Captain Marvel, yeah, the MCU is going to be falling down a lot quicker than, <laughs> than, than more soonly anticipated. But it's like, seriously, I just don't, again, don't understand it. Again, Tessa Thompson, you can actually, you know, go through it, at least with the MCU, because that's how they've already established a character. Again, saying Valkyrie is bisexual in the MCU, though we haven't seen it on screen. There's something deeper to mind here that's happening. The mirror shipping. Okay, good, good, good job on you, CBR. So this is something that's been played around. And again, this is nothing official that's coming out, but would you honestly be surprised? This would be the wrong direction. And this is, again, reason why Endgame should try and stay as much as possible. Again, the Russo should try and stay as far as possible away from Captain Marvel because it's this kind of stuff that's going to make people think, oh, wait a minute, let me start to rethink some things. Again, I still think it's going to make money. I'm not saying that Endgame's going to lose money. I'm not saying that it's not going to reach the $2 billion mark. But if it wants to make the most money possible, you got to appeal to all people. That include the MCU fans, that include rather the, the diehard fans that have been around since the very beginning, since 2008. Not the ones who kind of just jumped on the train because they're like, oh, look at this, we're going to see all these movies, and oh, yeah, I didn't know that before, oh, now I know that, while comic, you know, the Marvel Comics industry just died. You, then you have also, too, you know, Kevin Feige coming out trying to say, well, you know, talking about, you know, uh, Brie not having a love interest in the movie. Why Captain Marvel didn't have a love interest? Well, that was something as we were developing the script and queuing off the comics as always, 
course, the reboots that aren't selling, it never even occurred to have a love interest. That's not what the movie was about. It was about Carol finding herself and growing and making mistakes and being bolstered. Okay, everything is fine up until this point. Bolstered up by her female mentors and female friends, and that relationship with Marie was very important. That relationship that was way oversold by the critics because it really wasn't there. It was a very boring relationship. They had no on-screen chemistry as friends on screen. Didn't buy it. It just seemed like two actors that were being paid to be together on screen because, again, that's just how it was presented. And, again, why is it that every single time that you have to have a female character and you're trying to push it as this female strong strong women agenda, you have to keep it in that circle. You have to keep it confined to that. Why could she not be bolstered up or supported by male and female friends? If I went out of my way to try and say, oh, no, no, see, it's important because we need to have all the males in his life be there and all the women need to be on the backside and, you know, be in the kitchen, you would obviously say, okay, that's sexist, and you would be right. I don't understand why when we come in from the other side, it's totally fine. I'm sorry, like, I just I just don't get that. And the fact that this is coming from Kevin Feige makes me even more wary of, okay, well, things like this are floating around. Nah, this is also the kind of guy that seemed would probably try and go in that direction, seeing that he also pretty much said he wants the MCU to become more woke in Phase 4, which is why MC3, you know, MC3. EC3, MC3, is very likely, the MCU with Endgame, is very likely going to see the end of an era. Again, seriously, this is the end of an era. This is the end of the Infinity Saga. You're going to lose a large portion of your fan base. I know that a lot of people are out there saying, like, oh no, you're, you're, you're full of it. The reason why Captain Marvel did so well is because it was marketed to hell. Again, they spent $300 million on the film. Only 150 of that went towards production, meaning that they doubled their budget just to promote this film. Add on top of that, the free publish, you know, the free press positive press, not mixed press, positive press it got from every mainstream site that defended the movie, said that trolls were going after it, said that racists and sexists were going after the movie, lying about everything, add on top of that, add on top of Rotten Tomatoes, deleting scores, add on top of that, everything else. And you start to understand and realize, oh, this is the reason why so many normies went to go see it, because guess what? They didn't hear a peep. They didn't know anything about it, and if they did, they immediately just bought into the narrative, oh, it was just, you know, there's a bunch of sexists out there. So, of course, that's the, the only one that don't like this movie or sexist. And wait a minute, that means that if I don't like this movie, I must be a sexist. I can't not like this movie. So you have enough normal people out there, generic popcorn MCU fans, that are just going because, oh, this is before Endgame and we want to see Endgame. You're going to see a drop-off. And you could see it as early as Spider-Man, but this is going to be a drop-off because guess what? You're saying goodbye to some very important characters. If you honestly think that Brie Larson is the type of person, is the type of actress that's going to bring in the same crowd and money as a Robert Downey Jr., a Chris Evans, or a Chris Hemsworth. I think Chris Hemsworth's probably going to stick around, to be perfectly honest, because I really want to see another Thor movie with Taika Waititi, and I think that it would be great. Chris Hemsworth's also very young, and he doesn't really have any other agendas. I think that the only reason why people think that he's not is because his, his, uh, his contract is supposedly up after this film. I honestly think he's going to come back. Chris Evans, he wants to do other things. I know he wants to go into directing other things. So Chris Evans, very good chance that he might not come back. Robert Downey Jr., I know that he's also talked about not coming back also. I could also be totally not surprised if they stayed because guess what? It's very easy money for them. But let's assume that you lose those two big names, especially Robert Downey Jr. Let's be honest. Iron Man did as well as it did, not because the movies were great. Looking at you, Iron Man 2. And some would say Iron Man 3. The reason why those movies did so well is because you had Robert Downey Jr. there. If you think that Brie Larson is the next Robert Downey Jr., if you think that she's as appealing, if you think that she's as crowd-pleasing, I'm sorry, but you're being ignorant. Even if you were a fan of this film, you can at least step back, hopefully, and say, yeah, she's not really a people-pleaser. Yeah, she's not really all that authentic when it comes to her speaking in public. Yeah, I don't really like her all that much, to be perfectly honest. Even her character was very mismatched. And again, I've even gone on record to say, hey, I think that has more to do with the writing and direction. But if you're going to put the future of the MCU in her hands, ah, and you're also going to, on top of that, not just in her hands, but also to get rid of, write off, you know, whatever it is that they're doing with two giant names that are the reason why the films are making so much in the first place, you're going to see a drop off because there's a bunch of people that go to see these movies because of Robert Downey Jr. They're not going to be back anymore. There are people who love Captain Mar love Captain America. Guess what? They're not going to come back anymore. You're going to see a drop-off. That's a natural thing. That would happen with any franchise. If you have an end to a franchise, and we've never had a franchise, I feel, as big as this. Again, 22 films spanning 11 years. It's insane. But with any franchise, I, I, I think, you know, you go to TV series, for example. You see that when over, ta over time, when the certain actors leave a show or when a story goes a certain direction, you sometimes you see a drop-off because people are like, okay, this was my time, and now I'm done. You're going to see something similar happen here. If they want to make it as big as possible, and if they want to have the chance to at least hold on to as many of them as possible, it's got to knock it out of the park. And one of the ways that you do that is not by allowing a brand new hero that got mixed reviews at best, I would say more negative, but mixed reviews at best from the general public, that just because it made money doesn't mean that it's good, taking over 
especially when she is not really well liked. I guarantee if you were to take a poll about how likable do you think Brie Larson is an actress, you probably wouldn't see it nearly as high as how would you rate Captain Marvel? Just throwing it out there. Also, too, Captain Marvel brings into another <laughs> it brings into another account another major issue with the film. This was a major issue I had with the film too. The CGI was at times very cringeworthy, and I'm glad this has now been confirmed by Screen Rant. Eighty percent of Goose the Cat scenes were CGI. Yeah, I could tell. Because the whole time I'm like, okay, so we're going to see a real cat on screen? Okay, they're promoting the real cat? Wait, why does this not look like a real cat? Why are they using CGI here? It's a big problem. I wonder how much of this has to do with the fact that Brie Larson apparently is allergic to cats, which I think is the worst idea to have a character so well featured and has such a major part in the movie that also gets overblown and oversold, and then have also to that character not be a real person either. Just saying. Looks kind of odd to me. But as we said, Captain Marvel at this point has made $911 million. This is going to make a billion dollars at the box office. I know there's people out there starting to spill spin everything. Trying to say It's not going to make it. It's not going to make it. It's going to make it. Just based on the numbers, based on how films do in the first two weeks, this film is definitely going to be able to crunch out another $90 million over the next couple weeks or so. Again, it still has enough market, still has enough seats out there, and also people are still charging a crap ton of money for it also. The big news, though, if you've made it this long, congratulations to all my Alita fans out there because Alita has indeed crossed a milestone, and it is that it is now over $400 million. And everyone's going to be like, oh my gosh, seeing those numbers together is so funny. No, because on one side what you have is a well-written, strong character no sorry i didn't say one thing on the other one you see a forced terribly written overrated overhyped overprotected story about a female superhero and that's what you get if you want a movie about a female superhero if you want a female story if you want a feminine story if you want a woke story this is the movie for you if you want a good story with good characters that don't depend or rely on the gender of the person involved i'll lead a battle angel Great for you. It's not going to be around in theaters very much longer. Again, it's, it's slowly dying out of the theaters overall. But hey, $400 million, I think, is a very good thing. And as I pointed out in previous things, I honestly believe that this movie, in its Blu-ray, DVD, 4K sales, is going to make up the extra money that it needs to make. Again, $30 million or so that it needs to make. I think it's probably tap out around $405 million max. And then from there, it just needs to make another $25 million. It's going to happen. I'm just saying it right now. It's going to happen. And at that point, it's all up to James Cameron. But guys, what are y'all thoughts about Captain Marvel? Again, everyone's trying to say, oh my gosh, look at how much money it's making. But when you have movies that are relying on freaking CGI just to show a freaking cat, who in many cases, in many of these scenes, isn't doing anything else other than cat-like things, because the actress itself, herself is allergic to it. When you have Kevin Feige coming out of the way to try and say it's all about the whammon, 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 when this is something that should be beyond at this point. I'm sorry, like, this is not the first time we've had a strong female character. This is not the first time that we've had a female-driven story. This has happened historically for years now. The problem now is that now, in order to tell that story, in order for it to be acceptable, you must point it out. You must say, oh, this is the first ever female-led MCU film. Oh, she's a strong woman, and she don't need no man. The fact that you need to say those things, and you can't just tell a good story and have it explain itself, tells you a lot about whether or not the story is strong in general. And also, too, the fact that they're now playing around with these things. Obviously, this is definitely in the, you know, oh, could happen, you know, the definitely speculation territory. But the fact that it's even being talked about at this point is kind of disturbing. And also shows a very strong lack of creativity because they would literally, the only reason why they would make Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, gay or anything else, is seriously to gain wake, to gain wake, woke points. Because like I said before, if you want to tell a story with a gay character, go ahead. Go ahead. Find a character that actually is and go ahead and make that story. Make that movie. Because guess what? If you make it well, it doesn't matter what the sexual orientation of anyone on screen is. If you make a good movie with good characters, people are going to go see it and support it. The problem is, is that you keep on pushing this down our throats trying to say, oh no, it's going to be this. And if you don't like it, it means you're homophobic. And start, no, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <sighs> we just want good movies with good stories. So Endgame, seriously, stay away from it. Stay away from her. The Russos, everyone else involved in the marketing. Keep her as far away from this movie as possible. In this cut of yours, please let her be a supporting character only. But if you try and make her the hero of the story, if you try and force her upon the endgame audience, the Infinity War saga ending audience, you're going to lose a lot of people. I'm telling you as someone who is very much wanting to get out at it after endgame because it's been a great run so far, only maybe supporting a certain movie. If Again, Chris Hemsworth stays around. I would love to see more Thor films. But you're talking about a huge drop-off that's going to happen, naturally. Even if even if Captain Marvel hadn't happened, you were going to see a drop-off no matter what. But especially because we have Captain Marvel, and especially because we have this direction that we're going in, you need to start thinking about the future. Because you can look at the number all you want, you can try and say, look at all this money! Again, 
Another movie that made money. And let me just go ahead because everyone's trying to say, oh, why do you keep talking about this? Why do you keep talking about this? Again, Alice in Wonderland. Again, why, why are you mentioning this film? Alice in Wonderland made $1 billion. Over a billion dollars. Financial success. No one would say that this movie was good. And yet, and yet, when they came out with the second one through the looking glass, $299.4 million. Box office bust. The reason why is because, yes, a lot of people want to go see a movie. But just because your box office number is high doesn't mean that your movie is good. Oh, but the ratings were different. That also does not matter. If you are not able to hold on to a fan base and to build a fan base with new characters, with a new story or a new way of telling a story, you're going to lose out very, very quickly as they realize very quickly. You can see something very similar happen with... (laughs) You see something very similar happen with Captain Marvel. Because, yeah, you see $911.6 million, Endgame $2.5 billion, $2.5 billion. Captain Marvel 2, if it goes in that direction, if it goes woke, it's going to go broke. And somebody say, oh, you were wrong about this one. I said before, it's because I underestimated the normie audience. But I know that it's going to have a drop-off. The question is, how many people are going to leave the MCU? How many people are going to move on to other things and get tired of this? And how many are going to stick around? And what they do with Captain Marvel in Endgame, because obviously they're ending a story, but with three hours, they're probably going to be setting up Phase 4. Maybe they won't. To be honest, I kind of hope they won't. I kind of hope that they just let it be as it is, as an endpoint, and then start with something new and fresh later down the line. But if they are going to set that up, if the future is going to be about a character like this, played by an actress like her, I'm sorry, but you can kiss your audience goodbye. Um, but anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. If you like this video, smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. Seriously, you're all amazing, beautiful people. I know that everyone's kind of, you know, weighed down with the Captain Marvel news lately, but I also haven't really talked about it a whole lot since then. And it does tie in very much to Endgame because I think Endgame is going to be the Endgame for a lot of fans just naturally by the fact that it's the end not only of a phase but also of an entire saga where you're going to be losing high profile actors who are main reasons for the box office draw in the first place if you're trying to replace a chris evans or a robert Downey jr with brie larson you gotta make her more likable in the movies and also might need to work on her talking outside of the movies too but anyway that's gonna be it for me guys thank you all so much for watching like this video smash the like button give me subscribe you're all amazing people people have a wonderful day and as always god bless